Hello, welcome to the second half. A couple more very brief announcements before we get going. First of all, Boy, programming Joe Cook Cruise Crazy 4 is gonna be cake. <laughs> Alright, shut the hell up. Um, uh, a brand new announcement, 7.30 this evening in the Olive and Twist, which is up on 14. Olive or Twist. Pardon me. Conjunction Junction is not my function. Maybe this event is going to be so huge that it is going to require both the olive and the twist. <laughs> Wherever the fuck it is, John Hodgman and Famous Tracy are having the Scrabble rematch rematch. For number three to decide the title, that's 7.30 tonight in Olive nor Twist. <laughs> Do not forget, uh, as you saw it during intermission at the table up there, we'll also uh, have uh, merchandise for sale at the table post this show, and one last time at the... where is it? The Logo Souvenir Shop, that's correct, on the, uh, the promenade. Do not forget that dinner tonight in the main dining room is formal. We can see that our monarch did not forget. Monarch, acknowledge your subjects. And we uh, have been asked to let you know that Scarface is coding and coding his adorable little buns off right now. Working very hard uh, we, in the hopes that we shall have the Joko Cruise Crazy 4 booking engine online. Say it with me, everyone. Soon. We will announce it as soon as it goes live. Trust me, you won't miss it. And now, Dr. Smolpinus. Uh, what can, what can one say about Will Wheaton? We all know what a great starship captain he is. I, in fact, served with him for a brief mission on the Maltose Falcon. Uh, we shot a lot of ships. We didn't see any space whales. That's how the space cookie crumbles. Uh, I actually don't know him from anything else. I just know him as an Artemis starship captain, so I'm very curious to see what it is he's going to do tonight and why we invited him on the cruise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will we? Staples. Um, so, so look, so the, uh, the thing about this cruise that I love the most, that has been the most amazing thing ever, is um, uh, my favorite thing was watching the Joko live band karaoke. Yeah. Um, 
because there was this room full of people and they were all, every single person in that room was supportive and enthusiastic uh, about people who were doing something that, uh, for me, like I, I get paid to get on stage and entertain people. And I was like just stamping down panic attacks with whiskey through that entire set because I was so scared for the people on stage. And I thought that was awesome. And uh, I watched how much fun everybody had. And it didn't matter that you know you forgot a word or, or, or whatever. And I decided that um, I was going to force myself out of my comfort zone, um, which is, I'm terrified. Thanks, you're awesome. That's really sweet. But I decided to step out of my comfort zone and uh, I wrote some jokes. And then, and then I, and then I put them like together in like a set, and like it's sort of like a list. So I kind of have like what I think is about a three and a half minute stand-up comedy set list. I've never tried this before, and it might, like, it just might be awful. But I'm counting on you to let me know if it is awful with your applause and your screaming and your general sense of encouragement, which is also how I encourage you to behave if I do it right. Um, so uh, if you could just imagine that there's like a, a bare brick wall behind me, and that I have on like a skinny leather tie, and a, a sport jacket, you know, with the sleeves rolled up. Um, and, uh, and, and I've just come out on stage to your raucous applause. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, man, it is so good to be back on the cruise. Yesterday, uh, yesterday in the port, we saw the Westerdam. It was awesome. It was great. I loved seeing the Westerdam in port again. And, uh, and I actually just, by habit, started to walk to the Westerdam to get back on, onto that ship, um, uh, which, as it turns out, um, is uh, running a Glee cruise that is exactly like this one. <laughs> so I got up to the gangway and I was like, I remember the Jonathan Colton thing, and the Glee guy was like, we have no idea who that is, please leave. <laughs> There were a lot of lawyers there. It was really it was weird. Um, I am so glad to be on a cruise ship instead of at home because it's like we're having municipal elections at home, which is sort of like everything from like the worst of the high school popularity contests magnified by like not just your high school but the entire city. And everywhere you go, there's like just electioneering all over the place. And everybody has these really obnoxious, brightly colored, non-informative signs in their yard that let you know kind of like who, who they, they, you know, who they're, who they're cheering for. It's actually been uh, unintentionally useful for me because there was this one, there's this one house a couple of blocks away and they're like hardcore, like tea party psychos. Like they were like they were really like holding like they were they were choking back their 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 bio and polishing one of their four hundred guns while they were like okay I guess Romney and it's in like in their yard and I'm like so I go to their yard and I'm just I just write down who these these people are voting for and it makes it really easy for me to know well I just don't know how to vote for those guys that's fine but we have this we have this uh, one measure one ballot measure in in my town and it's called Measure S. I have no idea what it is or what it does, but I know that it's happening because these Measure S signs are everywhere. I have begun to actively hate and resent the existence of the letter S. Because I see it everywhere I go, and these signs are stupid. Like, they just say, yes, S. Or, no, S. But if you say them together, it, it's like, you, want, you drive by and it's like it says, yes. Or you look at the other one and it's like it says NOS. <laughs> so it's like I live in a town where like half the people are Ed McMahon enthusiasts <laughs> and half of them are raver kids. <laughs> I'm so glad that I don't have to see that anymore, at least until I go home because the election hasn't happened yet. Um, I, I, was on the, uh, I, was on the, I was on the cruise and uh, I, was, I was up in the, the Windjammer Lounge and, uh, you know, one of the great things about, yeah, give it up for the Windjammer, okay. 
I don't know what the Windjammers Rival Lounge is, but we should boo them. Yeah, uh, whatever you're called, not Windjamming. Um, so I was, uh, I was up in the Windjammer Lounge, and one of the things that I really love about the cruise ship is that there are people on the cruise from all over the world. And it's really great. Like you get to meet people and, and you talk to them a little bit about their culture. Uh, I was uh, I was sitting down next to a guy having breakfast with him and, and his very lovely wife, and they were from Paris. And you know, I lived in Nice for a while when I was a kid, worked on a movie. So we were talking for a little bit, and he said, "What do you, you know? What is it that you do?" And I said, "I'm an actor and a writer." And quite frankly, he's surprised you haven't heard of me. <laughs> do you not have television in France? And, uh, and I said, well, or the internet, really? And you know, a couple of years ago in America, we were really down on you. And it was just for food you didn't even invent. And, uh, and, and we, were, um, we were talking and he said, I said, so what, what is it that, that you do? And he begins to list this incredible list of things that he has done. I worked on an oil rig, I was in the Navy, uh, I play guitar, I'm a painter. This guy was such a shock of all trades. <laughs> that's right, that's what happened. Another thing I've learned from being on a, on a boat where uh, people are from all over the world is that whining is very much its own language. <laughs> it does not matter what language the whine is happening in. Like, Children, I guess, before we were born, like, we went to, like, we, there's, like, a meeting room, like, before you're, like, called to the womb, and, like, you just all sit around, I, I guess, before you're, like, whatever you are, right? You're, like, that little spark of, I, I, of like, my hope that I'm planned, and, uh, and, you're, and you're sitting there, right, and you're just waiting with, you know, and you're, like, waiting for your number to be called. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and we all just agreed, this is how the whining's gonna go, right? When we, when we get older, it's gonna be So it's everywhere. It does not matter what language it is, it, it is in. I heard, Mama! And then like another kid was like, It is so hard to be a kid today. Um, I thought it was hard for me on account of how there was a news group dedicated to the various ways that I should be raped to death um, when, I was, when I was growing up. I got over it, and as you can tell, because I'm not talking about it when I'm 40. And, um, and I was, uh, 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 I, I was riding the elevator um, going up to the Crown Viking thing, which by the way, <laughs> If you try to like pillage that thing, they get very upset with you. Don't fucking call it the Viking Lounge. You don't want me to go in there and act like a Viking. Um, uh, so I'm writing the elevator up, and there's this, and, and there's a, 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 young, a, young, a young, one of the damn kids today, a young person, and you've seen them. They're everywhere. The whining, and the uh, this particular damn kid today is uh, he's wearing a t-shirt. And it's got kind of like a Domokun on it, right? And then, like, Domokun's wearing like hipster Hello Kitty sunglasses. And, and like, and it's, I can tell, like, this is, I'm, I'm like sort of taking the t shirt in, you know, and it's like, it's, it's getting worse. And then, hipster Hello Kitty Domokun is holding like a, uh, like an iPhone or something like that. And then it, I noticed that it has like a big, thick Run DMC rope kind of gold necklace on it. And, and then the shirt, uh, down the side lets you know if you haven't put it together from the things that are already on the shirt that this kid is in possession of a large quantity of swag <laughs> and it just looks it looks stupid and 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 um, I realize that this kid grows up in a world where the entire like concept of swag is really important to to teenagers and it sucks because um, they stress out about it. I was in Target back uh, at home before I left, and there was a kid, and he was having one of those teenager arguments with his mom, where what he really wants to do, it's like a teenager temper tantrum, what he wants to do is like scream at his mom because she's being so unreasonable and, and doesn't understand anything, um, but he just, you know, wants to keep his swag profile in an appropriate way, so he's like, Mom! I have to have this shirt so I can keep my swag up at school. And I felt so terrible for this kid. Like, it would have been so easy just to make fun of him. 
and laugh at him and tell a joke at his expense. <laughs> but like, look man, I was an awkward kid. I'm an awkward adult. I, and I sat there and agonized this afternoon. What shirt am I gonna wear? Am I gonna, I put on, I put on a short sleeve shirt. No, that's stupid, my arms are too skinny. I put on the shirt that I like. Nope, already wore that, can't wear that. All right, so I'm gonna go with this one that I wore a couple of days ago and I don't think anybody saw me on that day. <laughs> on this boat where we're all in one small, confined ecosystem area. Nobody noticed it, so I'll, I'll wear that. So I go over to the kid and, and, and I say, look, man, I, uh, I know that this is really important to you and, um, by the way, I'm an internationally famous television movie superstar, so I'm like giving you some verbal slag right now. I just want you to know that like this thing that you think is so important, and this thing, this like stupid article of clothing that you've attached your identity to, like it just, it just doesn't matter, man. You just gotta like be who you are. And and as I'm saying this to him, I look over his little head and I see that there's a guy and he's taking the last Iron Man shirt, which is the whole fucking reason I went to Target in the first place. So I knock the kid over and I run over and I'm like, that's my fucking Iron Man shirt! Because YOLO, guys! <laughs> last thing I want to tell you about is a true story. Um, I was uh, on the bow of the ship the day that we, that we, what is it called? You don't take off. We don't have we don't have enough helicopters and nano strings to do that. Is it disem disemfrowling rock? Okay, so we were disemfrowling rock from the uh, boat parking place, and, and 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 Greg Greg Benson and I were were standing out on that helipad, and uh, and we were just looking out, you know, it's really beautiful and, and a little windy, sun setting, it's gorgeous, and uh, there's not a lot of sea monkeys up there at this particular time. It's uh, uh, just a, a lot of you know normals. And um, uh, this, this uh, you know, muggle woman comes up to me and, and she looks at my badge and she goes, You're with the nerds! <laughs> like, this woman is probably descended from, from Ogre, from Revenge of the Nerds. Like, that guy bred, and she's like, Honey, they're with the nerds! And I'm like, you know, it's really offensive and rude to group a, pe a bunch of people together because they live a certain way or like a certain thing and I really don't appreciate you judging me like that, you fucking snork. <laughs> Thank you. And then I walk off and it goes to a local commercial for like, that's advertising like VCRs or something like that. Okay, so that, that's over.